Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in the book of Revelation by the Apostle John. We're going to take a look at uh, chapter 19, verses 1 through 8. We'll get a start in chapter 19 here. We're going to take a look at uh, moving from lament to praise. Christ as Pantocrator, or Almighty, and then preparing the Bride of Christ. Let's begin with block one. Let's take a look at uh, verses one through three. We read in verse one, And after these things I heard a great voice of many people in heaven, saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord our God, Hallelujah means praise unto Yahweh. The entire assembly of saints praise God at the consummation of history, says Beal. Execution of judgment also accomplishes salvation. The lament of judgment in chapter 18 is followed by the praise of salvation here in chapter 19. In verse 2 we read, For true and righteous are his judgments. He has judged the great harlot who did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again, pornea for John means idolatry. For cross reference to Psalm 19.9, the ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous. And then also Jeremiah 51, I am against you, Babylon, that destroys all the earth. I will roll you down from the rock and make you a burnt mountain. The blood of the servants of Christ shed by Rome shall be avenged. And then in verse 3, and again they said, Hallelujah, and her smoke rose up forever. Take a look at Isaiah 34, 9 and 10. The land shall become burning pitch. It will not be quenched at night. Its smoke shall go up forever. Also, Isaiah 34, 8. It is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompense for the controversy of Zion. The fall of Rome's world system will never rise again after God's judgment. That applies to the end of days as well to any evil kingdom. In John's time, that's Rome. Rome is New Babylon. So it's a certain judgment that will come, will be brought to consummation, and it shall be everlasting. They will not recover again. So the lament of judgment in 18 leads to the praise of the saints in 19. Let's move on to block 2. Now in block 2, we're going to take a look at uh, verses 4 through 6. In verse 4 we read, And the 24 elders and four living beings fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, hallelujah. The amen is given to the assertions of verses 1 through 3. Cross-reference, Psalm 106, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Let all the people say, Amen. Praise ye the Lord. And then to continue in verse 5, And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, and you that fear him, both small and great. This voice could be Christ. If we remember John 20:17. I ascend unto my Father and your Father, my God and your God. So it could be the, the voice of Christ. He has used that kind of a structure before. Cross-reference Psalm 22. You who fear the Lord, praise him, all of you. The seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him. All you, the seed of Israel. All believers bear the name Servant. For John. Let's take a look at verse 6. And I heard 
the voice of a great multitude, like the voice of many waters, like the voice of mighty thunder, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. And there it is, Pantocrator, Almighty. And Basiluo means to reign. It's used in the aorist indicative active. It takes us full circle back to verse 1. Believers have now received endorsement for their praise from the heavenly council, says Beale in his commentary. I think it's a good comment. An exact translation of the aorist indicative active would be has begun to reign. So Christ has already begun to reign. It's given as like a future perfect tense. Remember, the aorist is like in Hebrew, a future perfect. John says it's already happened. Christ has already begun to reign. God's reign is a consequence of his judgment of New Babylon. Refer back to Revelation 11.15, key verse, the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord. And 11.17 even uses Pantocrator, Lord God Almighty. So it does refer back to Revelation 11 and the fact that uh, Christ has already begun to reign. For John, this prophecy is already certain. It's already guaranteed. It is the prophetic perfect tense that the Hebrews used, prophetic perfect. In the Greek it's aorist indicative, but uh, in Hebrew it would be called prophetic perfect. And for John, this is certain. Christ has already begun to reign. The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he is pantocrator. He is almighty. He is ruling in the power of dunamis and energia. Remember, dunamis is the potentiality of power. Energy is the actuality of power. Christ is ruling in dunamis and energia as the curios lord. Domitian is not the lord. Pliny the younger is not the lord. Jesus Christ is the living lord, exalted to the right hand of the Father. John is announcing the true lord who already reigns. Let's look at block three and take a look at the, the preparation of the bride of Christ. So here we have uh, verses seven and eight together. We're going to look at them together. Look at the text first. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife has made herself ready. Hetoimazo means to make ready. It's used in the aorist indicative active. There you go. Aorist indicative active or prophetic perfect and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. The bride of Christ, the church, will be clothed in righteousness. And we have something to look at here. The commentary is important here in these two verses. Because this being clothed in righteousness needs to have some very dedicated attention given to it. The Kaioma means either sentence of acquittal or righteous deeds. So the saints are either clothed in the sentence of acquittal or they are clothed in righteous deeds or they are clothed in both. Babylon's oppression, Babylon's temptation was used by God to refine and purge the saints. They've been refined through fire. If you cross-reference Romans 8.28, Everybody knows this verse, all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Even oppression, even temptation can be used for the benefit of refining the saints, purifying the saints. Because the church shall be joined to the kafali head of the church, Jesus Christ, in the second coming. Now, indeed, in a 2D, we jump ahead to verse 10, and this righteousness could be equated with the testimony of Jesus. In other words, the saints are refined by bearing witness to Christ in word and deed. 
They bear witness to Christ in word and deed, and some had given their life because they held firm to bearing witness to Christ in word and deed. They refused to worship Domitian, and they were executed. They were martyred for it. Before the marriage takes place, the saints must be prepared through righteous deeds. They must be prepared through testimony of Jesus. The Greek term parabolo means to close one's self, to wrap a garment around oneself. It's used in the aorist subjective middle. But also the, verse, the verses include didomi, to give, used in the aorist indicative passive. Therefore, keynote, look at 2H. Therefore, a theological tension exists between preparing oneself or being given the righteousness. And a great verse that shows the same tension is Philippians 2, 12 and 13, where it says, Work out your own salvation, for it is God who works in you. There you go. There's the two sides. And uh, for me, I think it's two sides of the same coin. But let's take a look at uh, Romans 5:18. Because this is the foundation for our righteousness. By the righteousness of one, Jesus Christ, the free gift came upon all men unto justification. We are justified by the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. We are justified by the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. Reward in heaven awaits believers who have endured the persecution by Babylon. And then here's your closing reference, Isaiah 61.10. I think it's a great verse. It sounds just like these two verses. I will rejoice in the Lord. He has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. What we have to remember is that uh, justification is by grace alone. We are justified by the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. We are sanctified through a participation in Jesus Christ. It becomes dialectical. We participate in sanctification we are entire, entirely passive when it comes to justification but we do participate in sanctification we get refined and purified through this participation and that's where the two sides come together but it's always a gift any mature Christian will say even my participation in Christ's kingdom is empowered by the gift of the Holy Spirit any mature Christian already knows that and sees that. But we should recognize that 7 and 8 do talk about the two sides. Saints shall be given righteousness, and they shall also clothe themselves in righteousness by witnessing to Jesus Christ in word and deed. So the end of days shall be a time. Remember, the church goes through the tribulation. The church does not go through the wrath, but the church does go through the tribulation. The church goes through the trumpets. The church does not go through the bowls of wrath. But through the trumpets, the church functions as prophet. Remember, the church prophesies and interprets events so that the secular world will understand the Lord God judges idolatry. The Lord God judges arrogance and pride and greed. And that's what Rome was in John's day. In the end of days, any evil kingdom will be judged. But during the trumpets, the saints serve as prophets. And then the rapture and then the bowls of wrath. And the bride of Christ is prepared for the second coming. We have a 19, 1 through 8, and that's taken us through the lament to praise, the lament of judgment in chapter 18 to the praise of the saints in chapter 19, the recognition that Christ is Pantocrator. He is Almighty Lord Jesus Christ. He is Almighty. He is all-powerful. He reigns in dunamis and energy of power. And he will be joined to the church, and the church shall be purified, and the church shall be changed from glory to glory when encountering Christ and his glory. 
And so we get tremendous teaching on, you notice the title there for this lesson, Rejoicing in Heaven. We did a great lesson on rejoicing in heaven and uh, great encouragement, really, that we are embraced by the Lord. And the Lord is the Pantor Crator, Lord God Almighty. He is Almighty Curios Lord. No ruler is Lord over humanity. In John's day, that was... Domitian claiming to be the God on earth, demanding to be worshipped. That arrogance, that idolatry, John said, that will be judged. That will be judged in a final, final way, and the church shall be redeemed in a final, final way. That will wrap up this lesson. We're going to pick up next time in 19.9.